Hi, and welcome to some time in the Word with RHCC. Well, we're well into the season of Lent together, and Easter is just around the corner. And it's a time when we can reflect upon uh, Jesus' sacrifice for us, but also reflect upon and celebrate His resurrection. And those times are coming very soon. RHCC will actually be in person for the first time in a long time on Easter Sunday. So you'll want to check out the details about that in our newsletter or uh, message us below and we can let you know exactly what those details are for Easter Sunday. Uh, now, as we begin our journey together towards the cross and towards the tomb and ultimately the glorious resurrection of Jesus, I have a confession to make. Now, many of you will know that Chris and I recently spent some time in Australia, ministry there with the Salvation Army, three and a half years. And I feel that you should know that there have been a few times since our family has moved back to Canada that I have committed some motor vehicle faux pas. All right? I admit that on more than one occasion, I have turned on the wipers instead of the signal light. I have went to get in on the wrong side of the vehicle, and I have reached the wrong way to put on my seatbelt. Well, thankfully, most of these mistakes were made while I was alone, so no one had the opportunity to make fun of me too badly. But just this past week, I made a much more serious mistake with multiple victims, I, I mean, multiple witnesses in the car. What did I do? Well, I full on pulled out into oncoming traffic at the wrong side of the road at a major intersection. I don't really know what happened. I suppose my brain just lapsed for a moment and I flat out forgot that I was no longer in Australia. I guess you could say that I, however, momentarily, I lost my way. Thankfully, I have a beautiful and very astute woman in my life who keeps me on track while I'm driving. And I also uh, have a wife that has a very vibrant voice that is always able to get my attention. So we didn't die and neither did the people in the cars in front of us. But I still think I have Krista's fingernail marks planted firmly in my arm. As we move towards the word together, in the text that was read just a little while ago, John 14, 1 to 14, Jesus is speaking with his disciples concerning uh, what would happen uh, in the coming days about his death and about his resurrection. He tells them that he will soon no longer be with them, that he's going away, but he will return, and once again, they will be together. Out of this declaration comes a question that revealed the disciples' misunderstanding of what Jesus was truly speaking of. In verse 5, Thomas says to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Well, it, it wouldn't be until later that the disciples would really get the significance of what Jesus was saying here concerning himself. And despite their continued confusion and misunderstanding, Jesus responds in verse 6 with perhaps the most profound words in all of Scripture. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In light of the approaching events, this declaration was a paradox. Jesus' way would be the cross. He would be convicted by blatant liars. His body would soon lie lifeless in a tomb. Because he took that way, we can believe he is the way to God. Because he did not contest the lies, we can believe that he is the truth. Because he did not 
um, or he was not rather willing, sorry, rather he was willing to die, we can believe through his resurrection, he is the life. Then Jesus goes on to say what today is perhaps the most controversial thing that he ever said and that the gospel writers ever recorded. He went on to say this, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, many people don't mind saying that Jesus is one legitimate way to God, but other religions and even individuals have their own legitimate ways to God. Many think it isn't fair for God to make only one way. But simply put, if Jesus is not the only way to God, then he is not any way to God. If there are many ways to God, then Jesus is not one of them because he absolutely confirmed and claimed that there was only one way to God and that he himself was that way. You see, the crux of Easter is this. God has given us his son, Jesus, as a way maker. And it's through him and him alone that God made a way for us to be reconciled with him. While Krista and I were serving in Australia, uh, the band Leland released a cover of a song called Waymaker, which became a bit of an anthem for Krista and I in the midst of the pandemic. The chorus of this song reminds us that we serve a way-making God. It is part of who He is. It says this, You are way-maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. The bridge of this song states some very important truths that um, we needed to hear at the time, and perhaps they are words that we all need to hear from time to time. It says, even when you don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, rather, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. It's important to remember that God is always working to make a way for us, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. You see, the redeeming work of God through his son Jesus is always ongoing. In the lives of people, it is a reality that was and is and is to come past, present, and future. It originally came to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus, freeing us from the power of sin and death. It is also an ongoing process in us. Believers need to allow themselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit every day to resist the temptation of sin. It is also a future reality for us. The final victory will come at the end of time when God's kingdom is fully established. The power of sin and death will be fully and completely destroyed. And although not any of these realities are ones that can be physically seen, it doesn't make them less real. I think we can all admit that it's easy to believe when we can see something physically, but it's not so easy when we are pushed to give things and to view things, rather, from a faith perspective. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 says this, We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That is faith. And it requires a whole lot of trust as we continue to fix our eyes on Him. 
So look, in closing today, I really want to encourage you. If you find yourself in a place where you're just spinning your wheels and it feels like you're just not getting anywhere, I want you to please remember that God is still present and His love for you is absolutely enormous. You can be 100% certain that God has been, is, and continues to fight your battles for you, arranging things in your favor and continuing to make a way for you to be in relationship with Him. He is still working in your present situation, even if you can't see it, even if you can't feel it. He is and will never stop working for your good. See, God's Son, Jesus, is the only one that can make a way for us to be saved from our sins. He is a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. And He is a light in the darkness. That is who He is. And this miraculous work that God promises through His Son, Jesus, well, it is our beacon of hope in this dark world around us. He is our way maker. And His way is the way that leads to eternal life. As we move through the season of Easter together, my prayer is that as we take a closer look at our miracle-working, promise-keeping God, that we would see with new clarity that He truly is a light in the darkness of this world, and that He is the only God in which we can place our trust and find our hope. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so very much for being our way maker. God, we thank you that you are a miracle working God. We thank you that you are a promise keeping God. God, we thank you that you are a light in this dark world. Father, as we journey towards the cross, and towards the tomb, but also, God, towards your glorious resurrection. Help us to realize in our own lives that you truly are the light of the world. And that, God, during the season and all through the year, it is our responsibility as believers, as a part of your body, the body of Christ, that we share that light with others. God, help us to find those opportunities. Help us to take those opportunities and turn them into beautiful ministry for you. God, I pray today that if there's someone watching this message that isn't in relationship with you, I pray that they will be encouraged, that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that in these days of uncertainty all over the world, that we can lean on and trust in you as our steady foundation and as our hope for the future. So God, I pray that you would work within the hearts and the minds and the lives of the people who hear this message. And that as we journey together towards Easter, that we would continue to draw close to you and that we would in some new way, in some fresh way, a further our relationship, deeper our relationship with you that will lead to a deeper relationship with each other. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.